Hi guys, Shemo Kulot here. Welcome back to the channel. So last week I shared a video about Chrome extensions and I got a bunch of questions about how to use Scribe. So I decided to make a separate video telling you exactly how you can use Scribe in your daily work. So here's the scenario, okay? So either you're part of an organization or a company or a club like Rotary, something like that, and you're an officer and you have new members or people that join your organization and they, every time they join they have to do a bunch of stuff online maybe upload certain personal information maybe upload a picture somewhere maybe get logins from somewhere things like that and every time you get new members it gets really repetitive to have to do that over and over again that's where scribe comes in so what you're able to do with scribe is you're able to create some sort of step-by-step -step tutorial that takes any new member through that task every time it is needed once you have the step-by-step -step tutorial you can create a link to that tutorial and then just put that link in a new member sort of manual so that they can just click and find out how to do something click the next thing find out how to do it and then no one ever has to call you for simple things again right so i'm going to show you how to do that step by step right now i'm going to do a basic one of sending a calendar invite because a lot of people don't know how to do that apparently but yeah so let's get into it Okay, so um, I am in my Gmail. So the reason why I like calendar invites is because if you're like me, then every time I make plans with people, I forget and I just try to put everything in my calendar so I know when exactly I have to meet this person. That's why I usually jokingly tell people that if it's not in my calendar and I've told you we're meeting on Thursday, I'm probably lying. Um, but yeah, so we're going to create a calendar invite in real time right now using Scribe. Okay, so we are in my gmail inbox right now the first thing i'm going to do is go up to my scribe extension right there i need to sign in first so i click sign in and there we go it signs me in so now i can close out of that okay so now i'm back in here so now this time i click the scribe icon again and i click start recording okay now, at this point, Scribe is recording every keystroke everywhere I click within this window, okay? So I want to create a calendar invite, so I go... Oh, it just like showed us a capture has started. All right, so I go to the extreme right of the inbox. I click Calendar. I go to Create Event. Okay, they are in Event, so I put uh, Meeting with Shem. I go to Add Guests. I'm going to use that email of mine. I'm just going to click that. I'm going to add a location. Let me add, uh, let me say Akasha Mall. There we go. And then importantly, I'm going to pick a time. So I'll say Thursday. Let me, let me leave it at 4.30 to that. Okay. So once I have that, you can add a description if you want. If you want to maybe put an agenda of what the meeting will be about, this is pretty casual. So why would you have an agenda for meeting someone casually? Um, yeah, and I think it, you can add notifications for that day. This is pretty useful. I usually add for physical ones, depending on how far the location is away from me, I'll usually do an hour. And then I'll add another one, which is usually maybe 30 minutes before, just to account for procrastination. And then I hit save. And it asks me if I want to send an email to the person who I'm inviting. And so I click send. And uh, yep, and it says event saved. And we are done. So once I'm done with that, I go back up here and I click stop recording. And then the, a new window opens up uh, in Scribe. And as you can see, what it does is it has a step-by-step -step tutorial of what we just talked about. So it begins with navigate to mail.google, then click calendar, then click create an event. You see that it has a keystroke there to show you. Um, so this, my clicking wasn't working, so it sort of repeated this. So when you have a case like that, all you can do is come here and then just delete this step. Okay, so then we have that step. All right, so now you enter the event title and you can edit this, these titles here. So you can say event title and add guests just because that keystroke here is, is on add guests. So let me just include that in this step as well. Okay. 
and then so in this case say click but here what it would be is probably add the, the email address of whichever person you want so that's what you change that text I'm not going to do that because that will take too much time and then again so here it, 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 it's not intelligent enough to know what exactly I was doing but in this case I was deleting add conference option which is not really a vital step in this process but yeah but you, you get the drift right so it sort of like creates text that b based on where you click in the email I clicked Akasha Mall in this case it would be add location and so on and so forth and I'm just going to assume that this is perfect right all the way up to the end when it says send right and then that's done so it does it in about 21 steps okay so when that's done there are a bunch of different ways you can share this okay so the first way is to just copy the link and once you copy the link if I open a, a new Google Doc here right so hypothetically speaking if this was a sort of like new member manual and you wanted to uh, how to create a calendar invite was one of the things the employees actually absolutely has to know so in this case you can select that command K and then you can paste that scribe link right there okay so that when someone clicks on it when the new member employee clicks on it it takes them to those directions right that's how you can do it so it's pretty cool right so the other way to do it the other way to share the document can also be if we click share there are a bunch of options right you can export it as a PDF so maybe you want to export it as a PDF and then put it in a Google document for your organization you could do that you could export you could export as an HTML as a markdown as a confluence these you may not be familiar with markdowns are in code um, environments um, but yeah so but also what you can do is you can share an embed link if you copy this embed snippet uh, let me show you what it will look like so let me go to my blog and this is also a good time for me to plug my blog if you haven't subscribed to my blog now would be a good time uh, the link is in the description below all right so I used it in an article somewhere and I just need to find that article in the blog um, I think it was the one related to uh, calculating simple loan payments there we go okay so let me click that all right so this is what that blog article looks like and he, I embedded a scribe uh, code snippet that I just told you from doing this here this copy embed snippet right I put that here in the blog article and you see what it this is what it appears like right this is the code snippet that comes this is what it looks like you can embed it on your website or any other forum like that okay so now what happens in this case is that the person who is reading can just get started by clicking and again the same workflow that you see here like this now gets converted in two steps you see there it takes one you click next and it tells you set up a sheet as follows three to calculate this do this you see that you get the drift again fantastic right so there's so many different ways you can share the scribe so many different formats you can share it but also really useful again if you want to give people instructions for a task that they keep asking over and over again I know I use it a ton of times people <laughs> people hated the day I discovered it but I think it's really cool okay so uh, really quickly before we go I just want to give you some housekeeping rules about scribe as long as you're using scribe in your browser it is free it is absolutely free um, a few drawbacks that you need to consider is in the free version you cannot change the image so you may want to change this image right you cannot change this image as you can see upgrade today so if a step isn't captured quite the way you want it then you may have to record again so that it comes out nicely um, but honestly usually it does a very good job of capturing them as you've seen um, another thing is that if you want to demonstrate something that's outside your browser um, so on your like desktop oh, this is my desktop looks pretty cool right so if you want to 
demonstrate something that's outside your browser on your desktop, then you also would need the premium version for that. But otherwise, I think the free version works pretty well and really covers almost any needs that you would have. So I don't use it, the premium version because I, and I'm cheap. I don't like paying for things. Eh, that's, I'm not cheap, but I didn't want to pay for that in that case. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that's how you can use Scribe. I hope it's really useful. Let me know in the comments below if you think that if you're going to use that. Otherwise, that's it for this video this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone you know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.